Number 10. Guards aren't feared much. As much as you might think prison is a hardcore or scary place to be if you're an inmate, it is often the inmates who make them scary. The clever and practiced criminals are usually never caught, and it seems that the unlucky, cruelest, and most unpredictable criminals are the ones behind bars. That said, the guards are there to make sure nothing goes amiss, right? Uh, actually you're wrong. Prisons have complex social structures that revolve around power, and guards are right near the bottom actually along with the rapists and fresh inmates. The well-guarded inmates are the most equipped and dangerous, as they have many friends and know how to bribe or bully almost anyone in an instant. For many prisoners, the guards are viewed as entertainment, just as much as authority. Many prisoners are incredibly smart and have infinite amounts of time to themselves, meaning that they can be ingenious in crafting plots and twists aimed at their authority figures, the guards. Number 9. Privacy? What privacy? Prison cells lack privacy and prisoners are watched constantly. Well, that goes both ways. Prisoners watch guards constantly, too. Guards are the Netflix of prison, I guess? Inmates watch the guards 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. They know all of their guards' deepest secrets, in some cases probably better than their own spouse. If two guards are having a personal conversation in the guard room and a prisoner just happens to be working as a janitor in the next room, soon enough the whole prison will kill to know that Sergeant Pepper has joined the Lonely Hearts Club band for not being home enough. Prisoners are always watching and listening. Some prisoners will even begin to memorize schedules so they know it as well as the guards do. Number 8. Inmates train more than guards. During yard time, many inmates will fight just to practice martial arts for whenever the next riot starts up. Sometimes they start fights for fun, for a grudge, or just to see how the guards react in order to better counter them. On the other hand, since most prisons are desperate for guards and there's very little money in the prison system, a prison guard's training doesn't require too much actual fighting skills. Sure, they'll teach them how to put a prisoner in an arm lock or talk them down, but martial arts? Pfft, please. On top of that, the only weapons that general prison guards are allowed to carry are non-lethal. Many states have a rule that all guards must experience the pain of each non-lethal they carry. So if a guard wants to use pepper spray for protection, they must be pepper sprayed themselves, which kind of limits the self-defense weapons at their disposal, at least for most people. Number 7. You don't want to be pregnant. If you're a woman in prison, you don't want to be pregnant. When the time comes to deliver the baby, the woman goes through labor alone without a family, friends, or even a gynecologist. In fact, no one is allowed in the room while they're going through the many hours of painful labor. They have to sit through all that fun pre-birthing stuff all on their own with only a guard watching them to make sure they don't try to escape. Luckily, the gynecologist is allowed to show up for the birth, which makes sense as they need someone to catch the kid when they fall out of there. I guess the prison system thinks that the prisoner will be a little preoccupied while going through childbirth and won't be able to make an escape. Once the little fellow is out into the world, the new mother only gets about 24 hours with their child. As many state laws decree that provide there are no complications during birth, newborns and mothers must leave the hospital after 24 hours. This means that the child is handed over to its caretaker, and the mom is taken back to prison. If all that wasn't bad enough, the mother is re-handcuffed half an hour after giving birth, meaning that she can only truly hug her child for around 30 minutes. This is more or less why prison mothers are very likely to suffer from postpartum mental disorders, and why giving birth in prison is probably worse than actually being imprisoned. Number 6. Good Time in Prison the rulebook for the infamous prison Alcatraz states that the prisoners are only entitled to food, clothing, shelter, and medical attention. Anything else you get is a privilege. With that little burst of sunshine, let's look at some more modern prisons and how rewards are given. The average rulebook has around 30 sections ranging from the care of the jail's property to something called good time. Failure to follow any of the rules can result in an increased sentence or disciplinary action. Good time is awarded on a day-to-day -day basis and is a way to reward what is considered good behavior and pay is in what's most valuable to a prisoner, reduced sentence time. It is given for acts such as completing a high school diploma, participating in a therapeutic community program, or ratting out your fellow prisoners. In fact, up to 54 days a year can be granted in good time for the well-behaved. That's nearly 15% a year. Luckily, this is enough of an incentive for most prisoners to be well-behaved. Number 5. Sexual assault is less common than you think. Devious may us all think that sexual assaults in prison are very common, but contrary to popular belief, almost all of the sexual encounters that happen in prison are consensual. Many reports that find certain prisoners will naturally just decide to become a bottom in exchange for favors or in order to get on the good side of those they feel are in charge. If this sounds like prostitution, 
uh, it kinda is. But at least it's consensual. That is an adult prison. Contrary to how it is with adults, in juvenile penitentiaries, 10% of inmates have reported sexual victimization, with the majority being from a staff member. 20% of those incidents were on more than 10 occasions. This is what people go to jail for. Add this to the fact that up to 90% of girls in juvenile detention centers have experienced some form of abuse prior to being put into the system, it really makes you question whether juvenile prison is doing more harm than it is doing good. Number 4. Prison Bookworms If you're going to prison, you may as well spend that time doing yourself some good. Turn your life around, read books, become educated. It seems so easy. Well, it may be a little more difficult than that. It turns out getting books and magazines into prison is rather difficult, as most prisons restrict inmates to 10 books or less in their cell at all times. This means you have to choose your books wisely, as you will have them as your only literary companions for a long time. Books are considered a privilege, so if you behave badly or piss off a guard, they will be taken away as punishment. Books must arrive as new and are almost exclusively shipped from Amazon through USPS. This helps guarantee the integrity of the book. Hardcover books are not encouraged and will either be returned to Amazon, or they will have the covers ripped off. That limits the books that are available to prisoners. Academic education is encouraged to better prepare for outside success, but how many softcover textbooks have you seen? The subject matter of books are also scrutinized. The Federal Bureau of Prisons states that books will be rejected if the contents are detrimental to security, good order, discipline, or if it will facilitate a criminal activity. You wouldn't want to plant any ideas in a prisoner's mind, now would you? Sadly, that means no how-to guides for escaping prison. Sorry, folks. Number 3. They get creative with what they have. When you have time on your hands, you have time to be creative. Prisoners have lots of available time, but not supplies, so they learn to be very creative with what's available. Need a pencil case? How about using the box your toothpaste came in? Cut a couple of inches from one end and voila! Pencil case for your coloring pencils. Toilet paper, water, and if it's available even some glue, make a nice little paper mache, which can be made into any variety of little things like dice, chess sets, pottery, and any number of decorative or handy items. Gum and candy wrappers can be folded and woven into tiny like sculptures, necklaces, or even belts. Every bit of garbage is scavenged to be reused and turned into something. Number 2. Tattoos and Ink Prisoners are proud of their ink. Ever notice that most prisoners have some sort of tattoo? Did you know that it's very likely that they got the tattoo while in prison? Well, it's been said that there is more ways to make tattoo guns in prison than there are tattoos. And as fast as they are confiscated, new ones are made. A tattoo gun is simple. It's more or less just a sharp object moving up and down rapidly used to inject ink. A common recipe is just a couple of AA batteries, a small motor, and a sewing needle or sharpened piece of wire. Simply add a little pen ink and you're good to go. Clean and sterilized needles are a challenge, so prisoners often find creative ways of maintaining hygiene by either heating up the needle or sterilizing it with soap or contraband alcohol. While this would certainly get you foreclosed by the FDA on the outside, prisoners don't seem to care much and hey, some of those prison tattoos actually look pretty good. Number 1. Weapons in Prison Yes, weapons are possible. Prisoners are denied access to many things that can easily be used as weapons. So in order to get weapons, they have to be pretty damn creative. Many of the weapons made get confiscated from prisoners. Need a spark or a light? A battery and two pieces of wire or some tin foil can quickly be crafted into a makeshift lighter capable of starting a small fire. Broken but heavy objects turn into clubs. Thin and flexible objects turn into pointy sharp shanks. Some of the most popular weapons found amongst prisoners are sharpened toothbrushes, a metal lock and a sock, broken bedposts, and your good old garrote wire. On top of this, inmates find some pretty creative ways to hide their weapons. Don't want them getting confiscated, right? Toothpaste mixed with dark materials like coffee grounds or pencil lead can look pretty close to cement, so you can hide your weapons that way. And it's pretty good for concealing a hiding place. Weapons can be hidden innocent looking objects too, with common hiding places ranging from behind a bedpost for clubs, to inside a toothpaste canister for shanks. No matter the object, give it to a prisoner, and they'll find a way to kill someone with it. 